So I work for the UN Research Institute for Social Development and we concentrate on social policy. Now, inequalities we see as one of the main contemporary challenges for development at this current time. So we work on social policy and we interpret that broadly, ways of getting people engaged, uh, accessing services in their economies, politically empowered, economically empowered. And when you have inequality, it can have very negative dimensions in different aspects of life. So first of all, economically, if you have economic inequality, then you're not really including people in jobs, in the process of creating wealth and in sharing of the benefits of wealth. Uh, you're wasting people's talents and energy, basically. Socially, uh, inequalities can erode that sense of community, of solidarity. They can erode social uh, cohesion, and that can lead to crime and other breakdowns in, in society. Environmentally, it's also very important to think about inequalities because inequalities can contribute to environmental degradation. And, in reverse, environmental degradation can also exacerbate inequalities. And then lastly, politically. If a person feels that they don't have proper political representation, then they can feel excluded from decision-making. And again, that erodes social cohesion. It also brings the risk that... Um, Politicians can tempt people into short-term or false solutions to the problems that they're facing. And we're seeing that at the moment in a lot of elections around the world, where populism is coming in as a response to uh, problems that are arising through globalisation, uh, through the challenges that people see. The agenda's only been with us for a year, but I think there were some very important conceptual innovations that uh, it brought. Um, first of all, the notion of uh, integration, so breaking down silos, working across issues to have you know, common, common objectives. Secondly, the uh, innovation of universality, where no longer development is seen as something that happens in poor countries for poor people, helped by rich countries and rich people and also linked to that the fact that knowledge and experience can travel in any direction of the world, from south to north, north to south, east to west, and vice versa. So a, a lot more of a modest uh, development process that recognises every country is developing and every country has something um, to learn. So there were lots of conceptual innovations, and I think central also amongst them was the introduction of uh, the challenge of inequalities for the MDGs, which were a good leap forward in terms of international goal setting and targeted some very important examples of extreme poverty. Nevertheless, during that period of implementation of the MDGs, we saw inequalities grow in almost every country of the world, save for a few. And that really undermined MDG progress. So the simple introduction of inequalities into the new agenda, uh, its principle of leaving no one behind, of reaching the furthest away first are really good innovation, in innovations conceptually. Practically speaking, of course, I said the agenda's only been with us for one year now, uh, but we are starting to see governments working in different ways, bringing together their government departments and ministries to break down silos, setting up new uh, multi-ministry institutional groups to tackle some of these related problems. And of course the agenda, even though the agenda is new, the problems that it tackles are not. And so all governments of the world have been working on improving health, improving education, tackling waste, uh, improving the health of the environment for, for decades. And we've already started to see new innovations in the way that they do that practically at the country level. Um, some examples would include uh, employment guarantee schemes which pay people to foster environmental services or goods. Or there's a new uh, term for uh, economic actors uh, who also prioritise social and environmental objectives and not just profit, the so-called social and solidarity economy. In Uruguay we've seen the uh, development of a care system which is 
fully funded from national resources, it prioritises people's rights, and of course it has a strong focus on gender equality. And again, this is a cross-cutting way of contributing to the SDGs. So we have conceptual innovations, we have practical innovations, and what we try to do at UNRIST is try to bring those examples to the attention of people in other countries so that they can potentially learn from them.